Joe Robe. Now, this is saying a lot, but I genuinely believe that this may be possibly one of the worst content creators that I have ever experienced on this platform. And this isn't even me referring to his incredibly disturbingly immoral actions, it's actually just me referring to his content, because I don't usually say this, but it was just annoyingly bad. I have made so many videos educating my followers about why consent is so important. Wow, thanks so much, King. It's a shame you didn't do this when your friend was accused of not understanding why consent is important. King, King, you're so brave, but um, I'm a little bit confused here. And for you to make a mockery of consent by comparing how we as humans interact with each other in a safe and productive way to breeding animals is shameful. Now, what he's saying isn't a representation of why I think this guy's content is terrible. The reason I think his content is terrible is because it's incredibly hypocritical and incredibly ironic. But go off, King. And posting videos like that just makes it so much harder for us to talk about consent and have people take it seriously. Well, that's, um, that's... Kind of ironic. It's it's very ironic, in fact, and uh, you may be wondering why I said was one of the worst content creators I've experienced, and yes, this is where it begins. And now I understand a lot of you are probably around 47 years old and not exactly down with the kids, and uh, unfortunately the person we're talking about today is somebody that, that tried to be down with the kids to a point of where it, it's... It's very illegal, uh, very illegal. Uh, Joe Robe is a former TikTok star, and I understand a lot of you probably don't use TikTok, but yes, Joe Robe was a 28-year-old TikTok star with around 4.5 million followers until he deleted his TikTok account. And yeah, it's never a good sign when somebody deletes their entire platform. Now, Joe Robe built their entire TikTok platform on them basically just calling out everybody for saying any possible thing. And you may be thinking, well, don't you do that? And to an extent, yes. But to the extent which Joe Rob was doing it, in my opinion, is, is it's quite embarrassing. His TikToks were very much the case of somebody would say the slightest of wrong things. They wouldn't exactly commit an illegal action. They wouldn't commit a horrific thing. They wouldn't say something terrible. They may just say something slightly out of pocket. And then Joe Rob would just walk along being like, yeah. <laughs> do better. And that was basically the premise of his content. There wasn't any critical analysis. It was basically Joe Robe just grandstanding on every single possible thing, stating that he is basically the all-knowing, wonderful human being that definitely hasn't done anything wrong in their life. Anything. At all. That was Joe Robe's content. And also, I do just have to say, don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with criticising small things on the internet. I've done it myself plenty of times. I just feel that Joe Robe's style basically offered absolutely nothing. No balanced arguments, it wasn't funny. It was just him saying, do better for 60 seconds straight on TikTok. I don't understand how that benefits anybody. And also, there are plenty of other content creators out there in the same genre as Joe Robe that did it a million times better. I just personally, was never a fan, but also I think it may be the fact that he is a massive hypocrite. He's very much somebody that wanted to make everybody believe that he has a completely clean slate and absolutely no problematic history whatsoever, and that's why he calls out anybody who is slightly problematic, and uh, that's when we get into the... The, the, the irony. And a quick warning before we go any further, I will be discussing extremely sensitive topics in this video, themes of sexual assault and predatory actions will be spoken about, and I do have to say, for legal reasons, that the things I'm going to be speaking about today are allegations, but at the same time, I do believe that there is no smoke without fire, and I am very much supporting the victims in this situation, but for legalities, and knowing this is a terrible human being, I just have to say that. Now, at this point, you've probably guessed what I'm going to be discussing. With the irony, it is the fact that Joe Robe, as I said, is somebody that has regularly criticised people. He is somebody that prides himself on speaking about sexual assault. And to be honest with you, I have no problem with that. I think these are things that need to be spoken about more. And that is the ironic thing, because in the last few months, Joe Robe is somebody that has faced numerous serious damning allegations against him, which has led to him deleting his entire platform without saying anything, without responding without any retaliation and to me that speaks guilt that speaks like a guilty person when they say nothing and just go and run away from all of the accusations and to be honest with you getting into it I, I find it rather strange that even before any of these allegations Joe Robb was somebody that as I said 
prided prided himself speaking about these horrific actions, but at the same time, he seemingly avoided speaking about his friend who was also subject to sexual abuse allegations. Because a good friend of Joe Robe, a guy called Calvin, made the exact same style as Joe Robe like this. <laughs> And strangely enough, after making a TikTok like that, seeing like somebody that really wants to take a stand against these horrific actions committed by terrible people, he was then accused of sexual assault and then basically just blamed it on the fact that he has an inflated ego because of, because of his followers. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. I'm gonna come back to TikTok. Um, it wasn't putting me in a good spot. Um, I felt that with TikTok, my ego was super inflated and I felt like I was invincible. I was unstoppable. I couldn't make any mistakes and it resulted in me making the biggest mistake that I think I'll ever make. Um, so I'm going to be off TikTok. I'm not going to do it anymore. I promised my teammate, Mac Jornel, the coolest human being ever. These shoes, highly recommend. Yes, he basically admitted to it by saying it was one of the biggest mistakes of his life because, oh, oh, his little ego got a bit in for Shut, shut up, man. Jeez, you should be in a prison cell, but you're promoting shoes. I, I truly do not understand how these social media influencers continue to get away with these things despite basically admitting to these crimes. With TikTok, my ego was super inflated. And I felt like I was invincible, I was unstoppable, I couldn't make any mistakes. And it resulted in me making the biggest mistake that I think I'll ever make. I'm sorry, but TikTok doesn't make you sexually assault people. TikTok is an app where you upload 15 second funny videos. It's not on a TOS to do that. You are a sick, sick individual who's trying to blame, I don't know, the social media stratosphere and your terrible actions. I'm sorry, mate, but that's not how it's gonna work. And the fact you're running away from social Social media and quitting it outright just basically proves your guilt and, and the fact you also admitted it. Resulted in me making the biggest mistake that I think I'll ever make. Now, this is obviously probably one of the worst things you have ever heard in your entire life, one of the worst possible responses you've ever heard. And the thing is, as I said earlier, he was a good buddy of Joe Robe. Now, naturally so, Joe Robe being a person that speaks about these very sensitive issues, you'd think he would be the first person to call out somebody that he used to be friends of on this situation, but no, 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 the only time he spoke about it was when he was pressured by other content creators who were calling him out for saying absolutely nothing. I was planning on taking a break from posting on TikTok, but I wanted to talk about my friend Aaron. Both Aaron and I felt forced to share our stories of surviving sexual assault with the millions of people on this app, mm -hmm. and so we did. And while many people showed their support both publicly and privately to us, I don't care. there are also people who decided to take advantage of the situation for their own gain. That's not what people were doing. This is fucking bullshit. Oh, people are trying to take advantage of the situation. What? The situation? The situation of you not talking about it when your whole platform is talking about it. Now, naturally so, I completely agree with what this lovely bloke is saying right now, because Joe Rove, after being criticized by a bunch of content creators, rightly so, came back to the internet and started blaming everybody else for running away from this situation and saying that he didn't want to speak about it because, because of his previous trauma, because of previous things that had happened to him. And the fact that I said that I still have effects from what happened to me from when I was eight. And now I would believe that if he hadn't built this entire platform on speaking about these things and then mysteriously the one time he doesn't want to speak about these things are when his friends are involved when his friend is the accused person that's a little bit suspicious and a lot of content creators started to speak about this trauma is not your punchline some people even tried to claim that we avoided condemning child grooming and sexual if you already seen this video you already know what time it is buckle up let's talk about it for those of you that do not know, when I was a teenager, I was sexually assaulted myself. Not once, but twice. But what I can't seem to understand is how in one breath you can say you will not say his name because it's triggering to your friend Aaron, but by the very same token, you keep up a picture on your Instagram of said guy who assaulted her. But herein lies a bigger issue. An issue with the fact that you have no problem calling out problematic men, but it seems like the problematic man is your friend and you're a little quiet. 
I want the women that follow me and that consume my content to understand this. If I had someone that close to me that I still have a picture up with them after knowing that they committed grape toward another person, I'd call them out immediately. Not be quiet. You don't have to talk about your trauma to call him out. And this is one of the main reasons I have such a problem with Joe Robe's content, because he liked to be this person that stood up for everybody, stood up for women, but at the same time wasn't willing to do that when it involved his friends. That truly shows to me that his actions before all of his own accusations truly were false, and he was simply doing it for views, likes, and money. But also something I find weird is that in his response, he then added the victim and I think that's I don't know I don't know am, am I just being nitpicky right now but is that a really weird thing to do somebody that's gone through such amount of trauma and such amount of disgusting actions against them you then at them because you are now finally speaking about a thing that you have hidden from for a good amount of that's just really weird. And now I am going to be playing a lot of clips from this Papa Gut Guy's YouTube channel. He has made a lot of videos about this situation. And to be honest with you, because Joe Rope has deleted most of his platforms, it is very difficult to find archived TikToks and Papa Gut basically has them all uploaded onto his channel. Some people even tried to claim that we avoided condemning child grooming and sexual assault. And despite the many videos I've already made about both those subjects. Wait, so straight you can't speak about sexual assault allegations because of your trauma from which you were eight and the fact that i said that i still have effects from what happened to me from when i was eight but at the same time you've built your whole platform about speaking about sexual assault allegations so i'm a little bit confused joe robe joe robe, I, I have made so many videos educating my followers about why consent is so important what is it you not want to talk about it or do, do you want to talk about it when it benefits you and gets you numbers yes I would, I'd really like to know because it is a little bit confusing and a little bit contradictory. And you do look like a little bit of a hypocrite right now. And this is where the, the issue started with Joe Robe. It really started to go downhill from here. Although I would argue it started to go downhill when he made a social media account. This is your trigger warning. This video will contain discussions about consent and sexual assault. Ah, uh, so I, I get it, I get it. Uh, you only want to talk about it when it gets you numbers and gets you money. I, I, I totally understand that, my, my, my good but No, I don't want to say my good buddy, even jokingly. You are uh, such a dick. Like, <laughs> I don't usually say that. But even without going to his own actions, which we will get into, here, I wonder, how did people not see this and think, yeah, this guy is a wolf in sheep's clothing? Like, this is somebody who clearly doesn't care about what they speak about, and they'll only speak about things if it gets the numbers. But yes, this is the first part in the story of Joe Robe's downfall. It started off with him hiding away from his friend's sexual assault allegations until he was pressured into speaking about it, and then eventually he received multiple allegations against himself in July of last year. Now, the clip I'm going to play is very long, and again, it is something very sensitive, so if you don't want to watch it, just skip ahead or even just click off the video. But yeah, I just want to provide full context. This video will be about one of the biggest hypocrites I have ever met in my life, Joe Robe. Here's a picture of him if you don't know him by his name. John is a disgusting and terrible hypocrite who abuses his platform by using his clout to groom and prey upon underage boys. He has done this to multiple people, including me. John first followed me whenever I had about 30,000 followers and joined my live stream and asked for my Snapchat, so I gave it to him. After Snapchatting for a few weeks, I invited him to a Zoom call with me and my other TikTok friends, which we did daily. After about a week of John joining the Zooms, he asked me if I wanted to get an Airbnb with him on my 18th birthday, which was over three months away. At the time, I thought it was a good idea, and initially, it was supposed to be with other people. This is him asking me who we should invite. After a few more days, I realized those were not his true intentions. He started to send me links to one bedroom Airbnbs, and he offered to purchase me alcohol if I went. And this is him talking about the one bedroom. And I was like, could we find one for like two? That would be better. As you can see, he immediately changed the subject. A little over a week goes by, and then I decide to invite one of my IRL friends to the Zoom, and this is what John sent me. 
he knew that I did not want to get the Airbnb, so he thought if he invited one of my IRL friends, I would want to go. That's him asking when he was going to turn 18. Now, I just want to intervene here. I, I, I see this thing on the internet where a lot of people are like, Oh, bro, but it's legal, man. They were 18. That's totally illegal. For one, uh, buying somebody alcohol when you're 27 and they're 18 in the United States of America is actually a crime. But also, even if it wasn't illegal, it's still extremely immoral. Do I need to remind everybody again? Do I need to put the reminder out there once again that the human brain doesn't develop fully until you're 20, I'm 24, and my little pea brain hasn't even developed fully yet. So these guys were 18, and he was 27, 26 at the time. He's now 28, and I think some of them have only just turned 18, 19. That is creepy. That, in my opinion, is predatory. Guys, a little word of advice. You can be extremely immoral, even if it follows the law. That's a thing that can happen. Need I remind you that in a lot of countries around the world, you can go to jail or even face further consequences for being gay. Does that mean that the, the law is automatically correct? No. I think as a human being, we can determine when something is incredibly immoral. He continued to ask me about the Airbnb for months until he just finally stopped. During one of the Zooms with all of my TikTok friends, John thought it would be a good idea to have us all take a BDSM score test and send him our results so he could see our kinks. Keep in mind, the youngest was 15 years old and the oldest were 19 and there were only two 19 year olds and everybody else was 17 and below. There were 12 of us. A few months later in the Zooms, my friends would go into separate FaceTime calls and it felt like me and John were always left out and he tried to convince me that they were talking about me and that they weren't my real friends and that he was my only real friend. It worked and I believed him. A few days later, I got a FaceTime call from all of my friends and I answered and in those FaceTime calls during the Zooms, they were talking about how John was grooming me and whenever they confronted me with this, I was very defensive. A few hours later, I called back and talked to them and I finally realized that John was grooming me. I decided to cut John off and not confront him about anything. I didn't say anything for the past eight months because I thought I was the only one until recently. I found out that there are multiple people that John has groomed. John does not deserve to have any type of platform because if he does, he will continue this behavior and will not stop preying on teenagers. He's a disgusting and terrible person. Teenagers is the key word here. What business does a 27 year old man or 26 or now even 28 have with hanging out in calls of alleged 15 to 18 year olds? Now I understand, I understand age differences are a thing in friendships. When I was in university and I was 18, I, I did hang out with some 22 year olds and I think because we were in the same space, very normal thing to do. But 27? Bro, people who I know are 27 have a mortgage and kids and are married at that point. 27 hanging out with alleged 15 year olds? No, th there's no defense of that. That is disgusting. But even then, the TikToker Dylan states in the video that he wasn't even 18 at the time and neither was his friends and Joe Rogue was apparently willing to supply them with alcohol. I don't care what anybody says, there are clear intentions here, but not only that, there is also a massive power dynamic. Not even because of numbers, but also power dynamics don't necessarily mean that you have to be a YouTuber to have a power dynamic. You can simply be richer than somebody. You can simply be in a better place than somebody in terms of a household, you know? Somebody can just be better off than you and there is still a power dynamic here. So Joe Robe was 27, they were in their teenage years, power dynamic inadvertently there, but also, he was 27. He has so much more adult experience, probably has more money than them because of that. But then you have to add on, he has 4.5 million followers. In my opinion, when you're at that stage of your life and also such a prominent figure in the social media sphere, you know that these people are fans of you. I don't care what anybody says, he knew that these people were fans. He knew that these people looked up to him and he clearly took advantage of that.
And I think before we go into any of the other allegations, we now need to speak again about the fact that his TikTok account has been completely deleted. He did not respond to the allegation. He did not say anything. There was no retaliation. It was simply buy. Delete the account. I'm no longer on this platform. If that isn't the biggest admission of guilt, I genuinely don't know what is. Like, how much can you admit to something so plainly without saying anything? Because he had four plus million followers. I think if he wasn't guilty, he would probably fight against these allegations. But you know, there are so many people coming out against him. And not just these allegations, but in terms of him lying about people, in terms of him doing shady things in previous jobs he had. I'm sorry, but I cannot see no smoke without fire. Hi, I'm Alina. Um, a lot of you guys won't know me, obviously, but... I wanted to come on here, especially as Papa Gut and I Speak are going to be posting their videos and talk a little bit about my story with um, Mr. J. I don't really feel comfortable saying his name given his platform and everything. Um, and I wanted to talk, like, like I said, about my experiences and my stories. So. so I met this creator almost a year ago through a group chat of kids from the age of 13 to around 18 maybe one or two kids who were 19 and there was a very large power dynamic even then where he obviously was not only the largest platform in the group chat but the oldest by almost 10 11 years because he was 26 at the time and i was 16. um jay and i started snapchatting because i was like oh he's cool we start talking. She started Snapchatting him when she was 16 and he was 26. No 26 year old needs to have a 16 year old on Snapchat. I think that's something we can all commonly agree. It's not just a red flag, but I feel like, I know it's not, I know it's not, but to me, having a 16 year old on Snapchat when you're 26 just seems like a crime. In terms of a social thing, it is a social crime. There just seems to be this really weird common trend with Joe Rope having close personal friendships with teenagers. And then a lot of you guys will remember when there was the Papa Gut and um, other situations with Jay where he was called out. And Jay and I had been on a call when that whole thing was very large and he was essentially trauma dumping onto me to try to kind of keep me in what I think was his grasp and alongside that he would then make comments and zooms with a lot of the other kids who had experienced this um, making sexual innuendos about certain people or just himself and trying to get us to call him hot and just a lot of other scary uncomfortable things that should not happen um yeah alongside that he'd also make promises about getting airbnbs and meeting up with us and alongside that he promised alcohol and hot tubs so and at the end of the facetime kind or the zoom group that we were a part of he started telling me that like he was hated by the group and that he had such a big platform that like something was happening with that and people were either jealous or stuff like that and he made me believe that like the whole group was horrible people who hated him and I and it was really just not good um these are just my experiences you'll probably hear other people's experiences as well and i really encourage you guys if you haven't watched dylan's video firstly i am sending nothing but my best wishes to dill and melina i think it must be an absolutely devastating thing to realize that somebody that you used to look up to was ultimately at the time praying praying on you i think that must be truly a traumatic thing and I'm sending nothing but my best wishes and I hope they're well and I think this is something we also need to quickly speak about where people say oh they were clearly fine with it at the time this is the exact same argument which was used in the James Charles debacle where people were like oh, oh, oh well they spoke to them at the time they seemed fine with it then yeah yeah 
because it was a content creator with millions of followers who they looked up to and they were also extremely young and probably at the time didn't realise that they were being manipulated and preyed upon because they were young and an adult probably should, well definitely should, know better and Joe Robe clearly realised that he could take advantage of these people. And it's not like one or two people have come out of their experience in this situation. The content creator I mentioned earlier, Papa Gut, actually spoke to a lot of content creators as multiple content creators who claim to have their own personal experiences with Joe Robe and he put it into with one of his videos in a Google document. Now he didn't include the names because obviously a lot of these people didn't want to be public with this, probably because they would get attacked for simply telling their story. But yes, here is the clip. 27 year old man in a Zoom call with 15 to 19 year olds asking him, them to take BDSM tests. Now, I am a 31-year-old man, and I'm going to tell you that I have nothing in common with 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 18, 19, 20, even upwards of like 25, I have very little in common. So I find it questionable that you would even associate yourself with 15-year-olds. Now, I understand the nature of Discord, and like a lot of times the mods for Discords are younger people, and I have those mods as well, but I'm going to tell you one thing. I've never pulled them into a Zoom call and asked them to take a fetish test. Ever. And yes, I think everybody watching this video right now should completely and utterly agree with what Papa Gut just said. Nobody at the age of 26 should be asking these people to do a fucking BDSM test. Nobody. And I understand it's fine to follow a younger content creator. It's fine to follow somebody who is younger than you on the internet because ultimately there is this social media sphere of content creation where some creators will be younger than you. That's completely fine. Just don't ask them to do a, a BDSM. It's so, it's so crazy to me that somebody with such significant prominence in the TikTok sphere genuinely thought he could get away with this. Some of the things in this Google document are genuinely vile. The BDSM test, the sexual comments that I don't even want to speak about, trying to apparently get them to start OnlyFans when they turn 18, and just so much inappropriate behavior in groups where allegedly the ages go down to around 13 years old. And this is a document of multiple content creators with their own experiences. And I, I I'm just blown away about how there are this many allegations against this person and he didn't even try to defend himself once. He just left. He just left and ran. And if anybody can't see guilt there, you're, you're lying to yourself in my opinion. Originally, I wasn't going to make this video about Joro, but a lot of stuff has come up in the past couple days that I feel like I almost have to. It's gotten to the point where so many people are DMing us and telling us stories about their experiences with Joe Rogue too, so I feel like I want to help back those up and be able to have this guy finally gone. And if you don't know the situation with Joe Rogue, pretty much what happened is that he, a bunch of minors, and a lot of the people that are DMing us are saying that they thought they were the only ones, and so did the rest of us. I can't go into specific details about what happened between me and Joro because it is quite not safe for work and TikTok will immediately take it down. But I'll try and give as much information I, as I can without this getting taken down. So Joro followed me when I didn't have a lot of followers and he had around, I think, 300 to 400k. I would go check to get the exact time and numbers that he did have, but unfortunately he's deactivated all three of his accounts on social media, so I can't see the DMs. We didn't talk too much, you know, we DM'd and commented on each other's stuff, sometimes duetted each other, and I thought we were friends. Then two days before my birthday, he DM's me and asks me for my Snapchat. And around that time was the time where he started to actually get pretty big on TikTok. So of course I added him because I looked up to the guy and he was posting the same stuff as me, and you know, he was doing really well on TikTok. And then my birthday came around and he wished me a happy birthday. And then a little bit after that is when he came out to me personally before he actually came out on TikTok. And so I saw that as a sign of trust. And so I really trusted the guy. And then he abused and misused that trust and tried to get me to do things and was sending me things that I didn't want. And I felt like I couldn't say no because I, I don't know, I felt like I trusted him. And then I felt bad for him because of all the shit he was getting on TikTok and all the hate that he was getting. And so I feel like he's just abusing and misusing his platform and this trust that he's getting with his fans and he's using it for these nefarious purposes. 
And as I said before, he has deactivated all three of his social media accounts, and he's pretty much gone MIA. So please, if anybody you know that is in contact with Joe Rogue, please stop talking to him and please make sure that people you know are safe. So yes, this is another allegation. I believe the person's name is Damu, and I apologize if I mispronounced that. But again, it is another case of power dynamics being completely and utterly abused by Joe Robe. Based on everything I've read so far and seen, I can come to this conclusion that Joe Robe seemingly just trauma dumps and tells younger people who are clearly fans of him extremely personal things to build a connection and convince these people that he's their friend, he's their disclosed personal content creator who they really look up to and oh, he's got feelings like me. That's what he wants people to believe in my opinion. That's what a lot of predatory people do. They tell them their trauma. They over express everything in their mind to younger people because a, a younger person probably doesn't know much better because they're young obviously and they haven't experienced these things yet so yes he will build these connections and convince them that they are friends and eventually he will seemingly take advantage of that this is predatory. This is an extremely manipulative thing, and it's what dangerous people on the internet do. It's one of the oldest tactics in the book. Convince them that you're friends, and then do what Do Joe Robe did. It it's it's genuinely disgusting, and it 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 hurts to speak about because. I understand that these are just people that wanted to be friends with a creator who they thought was just a, a top dude. A top dude who made content that they liked. I never liked the content, but I understand that a lot of people did. But Joe Robe has seemingly betrayed his entire audience and all of the people that he used to claim was his friends. First it was one of his friends, and then it was him. And it doesn't even end here, there are just countless and countless and countless amounts of allegations when another TikToker came out and stated that Joe Rogue tried to buy them alcohol. Hello TikTok, I'm gonna be talking about my story of this man right here, and if it gets taken down for harassment or bullying, I will be livid. It all starts about seven months ago when he follows me back. I almost instantly messaged him saying, hey dude, I'm a big fan. I can't believe you followed me back. Do you think you'd want to play Minecraft sometime? Because I asked most of my new mutuals if they wanted to play Minecraft because I was addicted to the game at the time. He hit me back nearly instantly with a, oh, sure, of course, here's my Snapchat and here's my Xbox tag. As to which I added both of them because I, I wanted new people to play Minecraft with and I looked up to him. And here's where things started. That night, me and John played for around six hours total on one Minecraft world and got pretty damn far in it. And we both, we both were having a lot of fun. We both stayed up late talking and we did this for the next week. We, we stayed up like till two to four AM talking to each other and playing Minecraft. And it was, it was great. I could not have asked for more. And I, I didn't suspect a thing. I, I figured we were just friends talking, playing Minecraft together, because that's, that's what friends did. And I'd say around three weeks later, he started asking like different questions, like, what state do you live in? And um, do your parents let you travel? And do you like to travel? And do I, or, and I, I gave him full honesty. I, I, and as to which I do, or I did. And I, I didn't talk much about it, but I trusted him enough to tell him. So I told him everything. And then he, he answered, great, thanks for telling me. And then stopped talking to me for about four days, which was irregular because we talked like every day. And then one day he messaged me and went, hey, can I FaceTime you? As to which we FaceTimed. And we and him talked about those TikTok conventions that used to happen once a year where you'd go to and like talk to people and the big content creators you like to follow. And he asked if I wanted to go to one with him. I agreed because that was, that was great. I, I would have loved to. And he offered to buy me a room with him or like a, an apartment or whatever it was at the time. And I, I was getting ready to go. Things were great. It was wonderful. He offered to buy me alcohol like before we never went I'm gonna specify we never went but he offered to buy me drinks there and he, this is the one quote 
I remember him talking to me about. I may be a pastor, or I may work for God, but I'm not against kids having fun. I should have realized it right there. This is one of the most mind-boggling things because all of these stories do seem very similar and that's probably the case here because he probably used the same tactics on all of these young people that he was speaking to. Hey, we should get an Airbnb. Hey, we should hang out more. Hey, I'll get you alcohol because I know you can't buy alcohol because you're underage and you can't legally get that. That's something which he seemed to do with a lot of these content creators and in a lot of their stories, they seem to be extremely similar. And the interesting thing about this story that he told, which makes me believe even more how true this story is, is the fact that he mentioned him being a Christian pastor. Because apparently Joe Robe is actually an extremely religious person and is somebody that has actually worked in previous religious groups and it's really shocking to me, given a DM that was actually sent to Dylan, the person we previously spoke about, and his TikTok, and it said this. Hi Dylan, I know you're probably getting flooded with these messages right now, and I'm so sorry for what John did to you. What happened wasn't okay, and I admire you for coming forward with your story and calling him out. I wanted to reach out because I'm on staff at the church that he used to work at. He was removed from staff over two years ago, and he was really upset with our church and strict protocols for working with youth so he left to go to another church and then they state that they have actually gone to the authorities and are trying to make sure that this never happens again and understandably a lot of people would think well this might just be a fake account it might just be somebody who is seeing this very serious story and people coming out with their stories and wanting to capitalize on it no I, I went on to this person's Instagram and they are clearly in religious groups, they are clearly a part of a church, but even more, I found a webpage from 2019 on a Christian website, part of a church, and this is definitely not fake, from this person two years ago. But then what I did after that was I cross-referenced the name of the church, which is St. John Lutheran Church, and I put it into Google, I searched it, and what came up was Joe Rogue's LinkedIn, which basically proves this story to be true. Because on this, you can see that Joe Robe worked at this church. It says St. John Lutheran Church. And then what happened after that was above it, a year later, he then was working at another church. I mean, if this shit doesn't add up, I, I, I really don't know what it does at this point. If this doesn't add up in your brain and you think this person is lying, I think you are just lying to yourself, to be honest. And we have to focus on what they said that he left because he was mad at the strict protocols with working with youth. I mean, what the fuck? One of my researchers, Louisa, also found other personal accounts detailing terrible experiences with Joe Robe. And now I am not sure how accurate these are. There aren't any profiles to these people, but it does just seem that there are a remarkable amount of accusations facing one person. And again, for the fifth time this video, how much smoke can there truly be without fire? This is like uh, the, the Great Fire of London and there being no source of fire if th this wasn't true. I'm sorry, but there is a source here. There, there is something that has caused this fire uh, and it's absolutely disgusting. But also, it's not just predatory things that Joe Robe has been doing. Another reference to Papa Gut here, but there was a fan of Papa Gut in Joe Robe's Discord and someone basically said in a private conversation before these allegations that they no longer like Papa Gut because of some of the things that Joe Robe said about them. I was a Papa fan too, but after I got off a call with John and heard about like uh, about how like he won't stop sending him graphic sexual content. Now this is complete emphatic bullshit. So this is the first thing. Like you're literally this is horseshit. I don't send I don't send Joe Robe graphic sexual content. I sent him that one video before of me of that one. I literally just showed you the DMs. There's two DMs to Joe Robe. I think I sent one before that was like, hey, uh, we should talk about something. Now I think one thing we need to take into context here is that this DM is before any of these allegations. This is back when Joe Robe was absolutely killing it on TikTok, and I think what happened was his ego was inflating massively, and he saw 
that there was this one daring content creator who was regularly criticizing him back then, and what he basically said was, hey, uh, this guy criticizing me, this one person who has dared to get the courage to criticize me, is basically a wrong un. Which, again, is, um extremely ironic. But again, this seems like another manipulative tactic from Joe Robe to get people to stop watching Papa Gut's videos, simply because Papa Gut was criticizing him, so he thought, ooh, I'm just gonna turn him into a villain then. Show some compassion and be better. Be better, dude! Is is, th is that why you uh, ignored your friend's sexual assault allegations until you were pressured into talking about them? Is that why you have so many allegations again? Be better, dude, by the way. Be better! That's how he's, what he built his content on. Be better. His entire brand. And the thing is, Jero, I, I just have to ask the question of uh, what exactly is being better? What is what is being better? I would love to know. Is it coercing minors into drinking alcohol? Because judging by these allegations and your actions, well, it would, it would awfully seem like that. It would awfully seem like that. Is, is being better, being in calls with, with underage people, is that... Is that what being better is according to the Joe Robe textbook? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. I'm a little bit confused how you got the actual balls for a whole year or two to criticize people on the internet despite you are probably one of the worst people I have ever covered on my YouTube channel. To conclude all of this, Joe Robe's content was him definitely compensating over the fact that he is a terrible person. I enjoy criticizing people, I enjoy speaking about actual serious things and poking fun and having a joke here and there, but Joe Robe's whole shtick was him seeing somebody say something mildly offensive and had to turn it into this big grandstanding thing of, oh, I'm so much better and smarter and more intelligent and just a better person than you. But it turned out he was just a terrible human being. And that's why I always get a little bit creeped out by people like this. I don't get creeped out by people who are critical. I get creeped out by people who grandstand on absolutely everything. I criticize people, but at the same time, I think I give leeway. I understand that not everyone is perfect. I understand that most people are fairly problematic. It, it's just a thing, and I think if you're not gonna say it, you're lying to yourself. We've all said something stupid or done something stupid in our past, but Joe Rogue wanted to betray himself like some angel, like there was no smoke of that fire, like he was this person who could tell everybody how to live their lives. I think this disgusting document, these stories which are truly truly horrific, summarize what a sick, twisted individual this person is. He couldn't even get the courage to come onto his TikTok, apologize, and then leave. He just left. He left with no response, and it's been around six months since. People have been telling me to cover this story, but I have, I have been waiting for some form of response, but no, there is absolutely nothing. So to conclude this, Joe Robe, you are just one sick, sick individual. I want to end this video by saying I, I truly wish nothing but the best for the victims involved in this situation. I, I have no idea how you must be feeling, especially when it is somebody you looked up to clearly and... It's so sad, it really is another content creator taking advantage of power imbalances, taking advantage of the fact that they know there are people that look up to them, and it's just, it's just disappointing, and I don't even know what else to add at this point. Joe Robe, please just never come back to social media, because at this point, I think there's nothing you need to say, and I think your silence is pretty deafening. But that is the end of this video. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like this video, because I understand that there probably is some form of fan base still remaining of him who will come dislike this video. And please, for the love of God, share it. Sharing these videos are extremely important, in my opinion, more important than the other videos I make. I mainly make jokey, fun videos, Videos, but I think this is one which will be suppressed in the algorithm. So please go and share this. I would really appreciate that. But also, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for sitting through this. And regular content will be back. I don't make videos like this every single week. I like to have a laugh. I like to joke. But yes, thanks for coming along. Please like, please sub, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, everybody. Have a great day.